Hello friends, welcome to week 12's q and It's joined by my lovely and helpful wife, Lucy. Hi guys. Be sure to subscribe to this video if you haven't already subscribed and also like the video for the sake of the algorithm, please. <laughs> now let's start with the next question. Next one is by Matej and he said, my question is regarding liver toxicity and liver protection, especially when taking oral anabolics. Most coaches will only have you taking rather moderate dose of strong oral androgens for a limited period of time, mostly because of the fear of liver damage, as the majority of people don't really consider receptor uptaking down regulation. However, in in medical scenarios, patients will be put on massive amount of anadrol for extended period of time and very shortly after eliminating the drug, their liver marker will go back to normal according to medical records. Is the fear of liver damage from moderate use of anabolics justified? Do liver toxic compounds such as anadrol damage the body in other way as the consequence of increased toxicity? And if so, how would you approach liver protection? Thank you so much, Lucy. That's a long question. Thank you so much, Matej, for your question. Your question is excellent. Let me quickly answer you. People are not over concerned about this. In fact, it is a real concern. And it's not only a concern for oral androgenic steroids, it's also a concern for injectable ones. And if you watch this video, I will tell you basically what we know about this from the clinical research. So to begin, uh, let me make a side note, which is that there are a bunch of liver diseases, right? In this video, we're gonna be talking mainly about adenomas and hepatocellular carcinoma, which is the main form of liver cancer that's found. Adenomas are liver tumors. So you can have an adenoma that's not hepatocellular carcinoma. But there are other forms of liver disease as well that I frequently talk about on this channel, including NAFLD, which is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or alcoholic fatty liver. Anyway, fatty liver disease. And NAFLD often progresses into a steatosis, which is inflammation at the hepatocyte where the fat is and then eventually into cirrhosis, which is scarring at the liver. So the interesting thing about testosterone uh, and androgens in general is that it's been shown that people who have steatosis, which is inflammation at the hepatocyte, tend to have lower serum testosterone levels. So it would seem that testosterone could be potentially protective for steatosis. Additionally, it was shown a very long time ago, maybe in the 1960s or so, that uh, testosterone could promote lipolysis of fat at the liver, so reduce mm -hmm. NAFLD at the liver. On the other hand, it's been shown quite conclusively that androgens promote tumor growth in the liver. So specifically, what we know is this, androgen receptor density at the liver is correlated to hepatocellular carcinoma, <laughs> development of cancer at the liver. So in fact, some drugs are being developed still that may reduce the androgen receptor density at the liver so that the cancer could uh, regress. Nice. And these are in people that haven't even taken steroids. So androgen receptors are such a concern that even people who haven't taken steroids that have HCC, hepatocellular carcinoma, well, I'm gonna keep calling HCC because it's, it's a mouthful, but people who have that want to reduce their androgen receptors at the liver. So all of this research mainly began in the 90s, uh, it began in the 1950s with tumors, but then in the 1960s, studies of people who had what's called Fanconi's anemia. Fanconi's anemia is a sort of anemia that's frequently treated with uh, oxymethylone, anadrol 50. What they found is that these people were developing a lot of adenomas, tumors at the liver. Uh, by the 70s, they started to find that these people were developing hepatocellular uh, HCC. They started to find that they're developing HCC. Now, well, recently there was a meta-analysis that covered 97 cases of adenomas and hepatocellular carcinoma that did not come from Fanconi's anemia because most of the studies, as I said, were on Fanconi's anemia. These include people that had anemia and people that didn't have anemia, but that they were being prescribed androgens by doctors. Out of these 97 cases, and I linked the meta-analysis here, which you guys should read, out of these 97 cases, six cases happened of people that were not even taking oral anabolics, and androgenic steroids. They were taking injectable forms of either testosterone or nor testosterone, which you guys know as DECA. So what does this tell us? So first of all, Lucio, I just wanna explain why is it a concern about oral and not oral? The main reason is this. Basically, a lot of these steroids, when they're taken orally, they're metabolized so quickly by the liver that they don't cause people to have the androgenic effects or anabolic effects that they want. So what they did was, chemists changed the molecular structure of these things and they created something called uh, alpha-17 alkylated steroids, which include oxandrolone as well as oxymethylone, that's anavar as well as anadrol-50. And these drugs, what they do is they're basically metabolized much slower by the liver. So they stay mm -hmm. long enough in the body. The problem is these were the dr drugs first known to cause these uh, cancers. But as I just said, injectable testosterone as well as injectable nortestosterone do the same thing. So what do we know from this meta-analysis? What we know is that on average, first of all, Similar doses of androgens 
caused adenomas and hepatocellular carcinoma. So it's not like lower doses cause tumors but didn't cause cancer and higher doses cause cancer. No, they both similar doses cause that and also they happened at around the same time. In both cases, the median time to develop adenomas or hepatocellular carcinoma was 5.5 years or 5.6 years. Okay. So in about five and a half years of being consistently on these androgens, they developed their tumors or hepatocellular carcinoma. Uh, the other thing is that, you know, he mentioned that when people take these drugs, their liver values, liver enzyme values they decline go. afterwards. But there is evidence that people who take androgens can develop hepatocellular carcinoma up to 24 years later. Oh, yeah. Because what's happening from these androgens is at least two things. Reactive oxygen species at the liver are increasing, causing oxidative stress at the liver. Mm -hmm. Additionally, we know that mitochondrial beta oxidation increases as well. So you have beta oxidation at the mitochondria across the body, but you, and of, of course in the liver as well, but you also have reactive oxygen species at the liver, at the hepatocyte, causing DNA damage at the hepatocyte. Now this DNA damage doesn't just go away when you stop. You could, it could be 20 years later, just as I said, 24 years later, we have a report where you develop the liver cancer. So it's not something that, oh, my liver values were up and now they're down, I'm, I'm good. No, you probably incurred, and I probably incurred, D DNA damage at the liver that is not necessarily gonna go away. Your body doesn't repair DNA damage that well over time. Those are the main things that you have to be thinking about. The beta oxidation of the mitochondria and the oxidation at the hepatocyte. But what we know also is this. Researchers have postulated across a variety of studies that the main concern is, as I said, because of the androgen receptor density being tied to HCC, the main concerns are this. The androgenic potential of a drug, how androgenic it is. Androgen, by the way, is, the, is just a virilization. How strong the affinity is to the androgen receptors in the body. So the androgen potential of the drug as well as how quickly it is metabolized. The e qu more quickly it is metabolized, the less likely it is to cause this damage. So the 17 alpha alkylated drugs that are metabolized very slowly, that's the main reason why they are causing a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. And the more androgenic they, the, the drug is, the more damage is going to cause at the liver. For example, there's one drug, I'm not recalling the name right now, it's not used commonly, this is a, a lab drug, but the drug is so androgenic that at one milligram dose, it causes liver injury, which is very low, one milligram, they're taking like 50 milligrams of anadrol 50. So just to put that into perspective, and that drug is just extremely androgenic. So they tested to see what the androgenic potential would do. The more androgenic a drug is, and the slower it is metabolized, the more damage you get at the uh, liver. And I wanna mention another thing for you guys. Don't just be paying attention to your ALT and your AST, the liver enzymes. You also have to be pay paying attention to the alpha fetoprotein, which is the AFP. AFP is one of the best signs of developing HCC, the, the carcinoma, the, the, the cancer. What are the takeaways from this? The number one takeaway is, don't think of oral steroids as being particularly damaging to the liver. Think about how quickly something is metabolized and how androgenic it is. So for example, oxandrolone, which is called Anivar, is metabolized very slowly, but it is not very androgenic, which is why it is not so correlated to these things. It's actually never been found in clinical literature to cause liver cancer. But on the other hand, Anadrol, very androgenic and very slow metabolized. Now, if you're taking something over a long period of time, and that is a long ester, meaning like, for example, say you're taking a lot of testosterone in anthe, it's always in your system. It's not like it's going away very quickly. You have that concern. It's always there and it's at a high dose, very androgenic. You could be experiencing the same thing. And as I said, there were people who took injectable testosterone, injectable DECA, and they got cancers. Um, so don't just think of orals. Think about how androgenic something is and how slowly it is metabolized by the body. And I want to offer another warning as well before I continue. There is a gentleman who I've been speaking to through DMs on Instagram, a very astute, intelligent gentleman who developed hepatocellular carcinoma, liver cancer, uh, with quite large tumors. I've been trying to convince him to come on my interview show, which uh, is beginning uh, this week, as you, or maybe it's the week before this one, by the time they see this, but I've been trying to get him to come on the show. I hope he does come on. He developed it without, he intentionally didn't take oral steroids knowing that it was toxic to the liver. But instead, he took a very androgenic steroid for a number of years. He said it was about five years when he developed the cancer, just like these reports. So it can happen. And the fact that, for example, it hasn't happened to me doesn't mean it's not gonna happen later. The DNA damage is there. So it's something to be concerned about. So the final question is, how can you protect yourself? I have a question. Oh yeah, tell me. If this cycle, like for example, if they take it for like a year and then stop for another year, or like for six months and then stop for six months, would it have a positive effect? You know, you, you would have to say that it would have a positive effect, but we want to know, 
is there an uh, is it is it just a is it a linear kind of damage mm -hmm. where it's just the total amount of time or is it the consistent amount of time because most of these studies are people who consistently mm -hmm. took it so we don't know if, if cycling off or not would somehow reduce like say you took five years but over a 20 year period mm -hmm. obviously you're going to get some repair of the cells some apoptosis and things like that over time depending on what you do with your body depending on if you fast and things like that but who knows i don't know we can, that would only be speculation i do like to speculate but i won't go too far when it comes to this and i should mention i am not a medical doctor and this is not medical advice the final question asks is how can i protect myself from this damage instead of making this video way too long what i'm going to do is after we finish recording i'll go to the office I have a whiteboard there I'll write a list of what I think are the main things like if I was to do this again what I would do to try to protect my liver and the reason why I would do that is because of this there are studies that show that milk thistle for example as well as phosphatidylcholine combined with B vitamins can attenuate the damage to the liver from anabolic androgenic steroids. So we know that antioxidants could potentially, and choline could potentially mm -hmm. help. And there are other things that I believe could help as well. So look forward to another video in which I'll write uh, a list of what I would do personally to protect my liver. Okay. All right, thank you so much for your question, Matish, and I hope to see you tomorrow.